somebody call a doctor because bad medicine is back. That's the answer. This is the Appleton Oak. I'm Mason Quinn. Folks, today we are checking out Gravity from 2013. This has Sandra Bullock and George Clooney in it. And I gotta say, it's been a minute since I've seen a movie with George Clooney in it. So I'm pretty excited to see where this one goes. Uh, my my go-to with Clooney is always from dusk till dawn. So <laughs> I guessing this will be quite a bit different. <laughs> Just a little bit different indeed. I am, of course, am looking forward to this. Know nothing about it. First time watching. Also know Sandy B and George Clooney are in it. And that Neil, Degra <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson had fun debunking, I guess, some of the stuff on here. So I'm ready, willing, and able to see what he's talking about. Oh, did our boy Neil tear it up or uh, what? I guess there's a couple things he, he, he had to say about it. In any regard. I don't remember exactly what. I just remember that being a bit. I gotta be honest. I don't even remember trailers for this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember hearing about it. I mean, of ten course. years old. I mean, Clooney, Sandra Bullock, very, very popular actors. That I think just what everybody loves those two. I mean, who has <laughs> anything bad to say about those two? But I, I know nothing about this movie other than what uh, answer just told me right <laughs> now. So and it has something clearly to do with space. space. So uh, I'm excited. I'm, uh, I've uh, like heard, you know okay things ish i kind of vaguely yeah. remember when it came out so all right yeah. first time well, watch for all of us should well, be without fun. further ado uh, let's go Oh, not if you talk to Matt Damon. Cap parts one and two are complete. Dr. Stone, the medical is concerned about your ECG reading. I'm fine, Houston. Are you feeling nauseous? Not any more than usual, Houston. This works when we touch down tomorrow. I'm buying all you guys a round of drinks. Just remember, Houston's partial to margaritas. <laughs> is that Ed Harris? <laughs> Sounded like him. Didn't Could it? be. Stand by, Houston. I'm going to reboot the comms card. Houston, I have a bad feeling about this mission. It was 96. I've been up here for 42 days. Every time I passed over Texas, I looked down, knowing that Mrs. Kowalski was looking up, thinking of me. Then we land at Edwards, and I find out that she's run off with this lawyer. As Houston recalls, she uh, took off in your 74 GTO. <laughs> Houston <laughs> recalls. Five hours off the reservation, and I show 30% drain. This jet pack is one prime piece of thrust. Speaking of which, every time we know the Corvette story. Uh, you're an astronaut. You have to have a Corvette. So he's not attached to the ship no. by anything. Oh, he's just on the jetpack. Oh, uh, uh, nope. <laughs> Hard pass. <laughs> Hard pass. Hubble telescope engaged. Upgrade fully functional. Doctor Stone, Houston. Medical now have you with a temperature drop to 35.9 and a heart rate rise to 70. Houston, I'm fine. Dr. Stone, medical is asking if you want to return to Explorer. Negative. We've been here a week, Houston. Let's just finish this. <clears throat> Card is up. I'm afraid we're getting nothing on this end, Doctor. Houston, can you please turn that music off? Not a problem. Now, Houston? That's negative. We're not receiving any data. Engineering is recommending a viz check for component damage. Oh, my God. The problem must be originating from the comms panel. Engineering admits that you warned us that this could happen. But that's as close to an apology as you're going to get from them. Hey, How long do you think just it'll take? Cruising around in a jet pack. <laughs> Kowalski, we, we know you don't care about things like this, but uh, for your information, this delay is not going to be long enough for you to break Anatoly Solovyev's spacewalking record. Uh, 75 minutes shy? Never crossed my mind. Mind if I join the fun? I know it's been a rough week. Shit. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Don't want to lose that. I'm used to a basement lab in a hospital where things fall to the floor. You're the genius up here. I only drive the bus. Laura, this is Houston. A NORAD reports a Russian satellite has incurred a missile strike. The impact has created a cloud of debris. Current debris orbit does not overlap with your trajectories. Should we be worried? Now let's let the boys down there worry for us. So, Doc, now that you work for NASA... <laughs> how long was your training? Uh, six months. What is this scanning system? It's designed for hospital use, but this one's a prototype. They don't bankroll prototypes. 
Even for your pretty blue eyes. Well, my eyes are brown. <laughs> right now, your eyes are bloodshot. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's not something I'd be testing. Ugh, this is all making me like really nervous. <laughs> you gotta admit one thing: can't beat the view. God, oh, what a shot! Houston from first inspection comms panel appears to be dead. Am I a go to cut link to auxiliary? Houston, I have a bad feeling about this mission. The same feeling I had about Mardi Gras 1987. Proceeding to override. Then all of a sudden, I look up. And there she is. I'm about to yell at her. And I see she's holding hands with some short, hairy guy in board shorts and a margarita bill shirt. <laughs> ISS, this is Houston. Explorer, this is Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Mission abort. Repeat. Mission abort. Oh, they want him out of there ASAP. Immediate return to Explorer. Debris from the missile strike has caused a chain reaction, hitting other satellites and creating oh. new debris. Traveling faster than a high-speed bullet up towards your altitude. I'll copy. Copy all. The board is still initializing. Uh, you don't have time. Shut it down. That's an order. Sorry, I'm done. I'm done. Houston, update? Well, we have a full-on chain reaction. It's been confirmed that it's the unintentional side effect of the Russians striking one of their own satellites. Most likely a spy sat gone bad. Now it's shrapnel. Explorer, new data coming through. Most of our systems are gone. Debris chain reaction is out of control and rapidly expanding. Multiple satellites are down and they keep on falling. To find multiple satellites? Most of them are gone. Kowalski visual of debris at 9 o'clock. Expect the communication Ooh. to black out. And Ooh, oh, that's a Copy lot. That, I have Dr. Stone requesting Oh, God. You guys got to get the this, hell out of there. This is mm. giving me like crazy anxiety. Or Dr. Stone requesting faster transport to Bay Area. Look, we need to get the hell out of here. Need some help there, man? No, don't wait for us. Oh. oh. Man down. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Oh, she's on the arm. Oh my god. Oh. Don't detach. Must detach. If you don't detach, that arm's gonna carry you too far. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh, holy shit. She's just out there in nothing. Do you copy? I can't! Your position. GPS is down! Grab a visual of Explorer! No! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! Oh. I can't remember the last time I had anxiety watching a movie like this. It's giving so me right fast. Now. We're only like 14 minutes yeah. in. I mean, these shots they're giving us. Kowalski, I have a visual. I have a visual. With North, at 12 o'clock, I can see, I can see the China station. I said it at 7 o'clock. No communications. Oxygen no, low. 10%. Look at the temperature, 15 degrees. Ooh, temperature yeah. warning. Lieutenant Kowalski, do you copy? Explore, do you, do you copy? And she's got no way to propel herself anywhere. She's just floating. I am off structure and I'm drifting. Do you copy? She drifted a long way. Yeah, you're the Tenet Kowalski, yes. I'm fine, I'm fine. 3.6 PSI. Give me your O2. Uh, oxygen is going down. It's going down fast. You're burning oxygen, and we don't want to do that. Uh, I'm not... nearly there. Oh, there he is. Gotcha. I know you never realized how devastatingly good looking I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I need you to stop staring and help me with the tether. Now to clear you from the jets, I'm gonna give you a little push. No, 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 damn it, no. Ah. See? Where you go, I go. Let's get out of here. Ah, damn it! <sighs> Going back to the shuttle, how's that for a plan? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Houston, this is Kowalski. How do you copy? If somebody is listening, they might just save your life. Houston clocked that debris at 50,000 miles an hour. If you factor in our current orbit, then I figure we got about 90 minutes before we get our asses kicked again. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love the views, how they're changing them like this. Houston in the blind, this is Kowalski. Our current location is approximately 900 meters out. Dr. Stone and I would like to retrieve the body of a mission specialist, Sharif. Return it to the shuttle. Where is he? Oh my <laughs> he just got us right in there. Oh. Oh god, they're gonna get all tangled up in this thing. Okay. Let me away. Oh, oh my wow. god. Oh what? Oh. 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 Whoa. Look at that. Here's hoping you have a hell of an insurance policy, Houston. Commence search for survivors. Oh, two down to five percent. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, the whole of, shuttle's wrecked. Yeah, it's everything is trashed. All the windows are blown out. Oh my god. You're not going anywhere in that. Mar uh, Marvin the Martian. Marvin. <laughs> nice. Oh! Ooh, that got me. Oh! Ooh. Was that a retainer? Yeah. Mission specialist Dr. Stone and mission commander Matthew Kowalski are the sole survivors of the SDS. One five seven. I apologize for not complying. I should have stopped working as soon as he instructed me to. We were gonna get hit no matter what. Yeah, that wouldn't have mattered. We have to make our way to the space station. Yep, that's the only chance. It's a bit of a hike. We need to use their escape pod. So use to get back to Earth. Great. After you. Does she have enough oxygen? Yeah, I was to gonna get say, there? I mean Dr. Stone and I have determined to proceed to ISS. ISS, if you hear us. We could sure use a rescue mission. Oh, I mean, visually, this is just incredible. I, I, I gotta be honest, guys. Like, just as far as like, like on edge. Like the first twenty minutes of this movie has been insane. So where's home, Doctor Stone? Lake Zurich. Where the hell is that? Illinois. Illinois, Central Time. What are the good people of Lake Zurich doing at eight o'clock? I'm not gonna make it, I'm slowing you down. What would you be doing? It's eight o'clock, driving home. The radio. There we go, let me guess, NPR? <laughs> Where are you driving to? I just drive. Is there a Mr. Stone? No. Somebody down there looking up, thinking about you. I had a daughter. Ooh. She was four. She was at school playing tag, slipped, hit her head, and that was it. Oh. I was driving when I got the call, so ever since then, that's what I do. Boy, this has got to be like a record for hitting you with the heavy stuff right away. Well, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is we're about five minutes from the ISS, and I know where the Russians stash their vodka. The bad news is I'm going to be about ten minutes short of breaking Anatoly's record. I'm redlining, my O2 tank pressure is low. The tank is out of oxygen, but you still have it in your suit. Got it. So you have to sip, not gulp. The station must have been evacuated because the first soy is missing. The second soy is exhibit surface damage and its chute has been deployed. Any use as an escape pod for re-entry is impossible. <sighs> God, nothing is working. Oh, heartbeat. Fire. You have to break. Can't, the can's empty. Uh, okay, still some stuff to grab here. What do I do? No, no, uh, no, 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 no. Grab something, grab something, I'm... grab something. Anything. Oh. Ugh. Oh no, I the cut. Grab one of them cables. It's gonna have to, otherwise she's gonna. It looks like she might re-enter. Oh, she got her under leg. Shit. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, Just hold on. You have to let me go. No. The ropes are too loose. No. Oh, she's losing it. Ryan, let go. No. You're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. 
It's not up to you. No, no, no. Please don't. No. Please don't do that. You're gonna make it, Ryan. No! No! no. That's it. We're losing Clooney. I had you. I had you. <laughs> Ryan, can you hear me? I see you too, alarm went up. Can you see the airlock? It's above you, next to the Saria module. Yes. Yes, I see it. Mike, Mike, look at your breathing CO2. You're losing consciousness. Look to the west. You see that dot in the distance? It's a Chinese station. Yes. You're going to take the Soyuz, and you're going to cruise over there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Never flown a Shinsu? It doesn't matter. You never flown the Soyuz either? My simulator. I crash it every time. You point the damn thing at Earth. By this time tomorrow, you're going to be back in Lake Zurich with a hell of a story to tell. I'm going to take the Soyuz and come get you. No, you're not. Ryan, you're going to have to learn to let go. But I... I want to hear you say you're going to make it. <sighs> come on, Ryan, say it. I'm going to make it. Tell me name is Ryan for a girl. Dad wanted a boy. <sighs> Oh, no. oh my god. You should see the sun on the Ganges. Alright, come on, let's let's get to the airlock. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Oh, oh. God, it's lucky that didn't blow her away. Could have been the end of it right there. Yeah. Some air. Should have waited for the, the yeah, air for it to pressurize. <gasps> oh. Okay, we're this far. That whole sequence, uh, I, yeah. I just uh, that, that, that was insane. Especially that heavy breathing at the end. Yep, and all the beeping uh, and the alarms. The first person view. You know, with that shot, the way she was there and with those cables is almost like a baby with an umbilical cord. You know? Oh, that's really bad. We don't want fire in space. Matt, this is Ryan. Copy. Come on, Matt, talk to me. Tell me where you are, give me your position. Oh, come on. You've been yammering since we left Cape Canaveral. Now you decide to shut up, talk to me. Just say something, say anything, I don't care. Tell me about uh, Mardi Gras, tell me about the hairy guy. Please talk to me. He's lost, there's yeah. no way. This is Mission Specialist Ryan Stone reporting from the ISS. All communications with Mission Commander Matthew Kowalski have been lost. I, Ryan Stone, am the sole survivor of SDS-157. Uh, what now? Is the debris back already? Fire like you thought. Yep, the fire. Oh yeah, the extinguisher. Yeah. Tell you backwards. Oh, that's a lot. Oh, oh. She's got to just seal everything off. Where is it, Bell? Are you not? Imagine having to pull out a <laughs> the manual. manual. <laughs> While your space station's blowing up. Four minutes. Uh, we don't have four seconds. This is Seven minutes to get out of here. She's only got seven minutes of oxygen in that thing? Uh, it's seven minutes until that debris, debris comes back. back. Oh, yeah, the 90 minutes. 
and she stole oh, the parachute. Oh, that's the parachute. Oh, she's all wrapped up in it. Dump can, that can she release? Yeah, she has to release it. Yeah. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, just made it. All right, we're stable. Clear skies with a chance of satellite debris. Okay, we detach this and we go home. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Nothing to it. Uh, your wrench is. Uh, don't don't let go. It's not ahead. tethered. Let's maybe uh, put that one around our wrist. Shit. Oh boy. Oh, uh, it's getting close. Let's give moviegoers the most suspenseful <laughs> audio in the history of movies. Yeah. Oh, there's still one attached yet. It's gonna whip her around. Oh! Ugh. And you're not even hearing any of the explosions. Oh, there goes the wrench. And we're loose. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Oops. Let's stabilize you. Okay. Wait, is that? No, that's the Let's other go uh, the Chinese station. Chinese station. Chinese station. I was going to say, that'd be way too small. Hey. Uh. <laughs> I will correct trajectory. Mm. I will engage Escar Day. She have to do it manually or? No thrusters? Yeah. You gotta be kidding me. Out of fuel. You gotta be kidding me! We're not getting the uh, the Armageddon moment where he, the guy hits it and it fires up. Yeah. Dr. Ryan Stone, I'm currently out of fuel in the drift. Do you copy? Mission Specialist Ryan Stone, do you copy? Houston, please confirm identity. Is this the Chinese station? Is this Tiangong? Copy. Mayday. Yes, yes, Mayday. Mayday. I don't know. No, my name is not Mayday. I'm Stone. Dr. Ryan Stone, I need help. You're calling for us. Oh, she's getting an earth station. Make your dogs bark again for me, would you please? You know, woof woof, dogs. Oh. oh. I know we've got like a lot of time left in this movie, but I'm, things are looking pretty bleak here. They are. No, oh, die on a gun. I know we're all gonna die. Everybody knows that. But I'm gonna die today. I need that. You know, to know nobody will mourn for me. No one will pray for my soul. Will you say a prayer for me? Or is it too late? There's a baby with you, huh? I used to sing to my baby. I hope I see her soon. What's she doing? What's she doing? Purging the oxygen or something? She's filling it with it. Yeah. O2. Yeah, she's dropping the O2. <sighs> Send me to sleep and I'll sleep. That's not Clooney, but... Yeah, that's Clooney, isn't it? No, that's not Clooney. No, no, no. Wouldn't she have died instantly? Come on. God. No way. No. Let's check your watch. 13 hours and 11 minutes. 
Call Anatoly and tell him he's been bumped. It's so gloomy in there, isn't it? How did you? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Holy I shit! Back. It helps I didn't have you around to distract me. I'm glad to see you. I didn't think you were gonna make it. <laughs> just like that. Yeah, yeah, I never told her it was. Looked bewildered. Yeah, just, uh, I just don't understand. Hey, how there you, it is. How could they open up the airlock like that? The Chinese yeah. station's about 100 miles. Just a little Sunday drive. I tried everything. Did you try the soft landing jets? Well, landing is launching. It's the same thing. Didn't you learn about that in training? I never got to land the simulator. I told you. But you know about it. I get it. It's nice up here. Just close your eyes and tune out everybody. It's safe. Your kid died. Doesn't get any rougher than that. But still, it's a matter of what you do now. You gotta plant both your feet on the ground and start living life. I'm telling you, it's a hell of a story. It's time to go home. She oh, imagined it's a it all. fake out. I was gonna say, there's no way they could open that door. Uh. <laughs> you sons of bitches. <laughs> oh, my, there's no way you can open <laughs> that, that door. door space. She's got her helmet off. Yeah. Wouldn't it have sucked her right out or yeah. frozen well, her she's, immediately? Or? Yeah. She is strapped in, so. Uh. Oh. Soft landing jets trigger automatically at three meters before landing, so I need to get rid of the bayo in the engine module. Okay. Oh. oh. All right. Houston, here's the tricky part. We are three meters off the earth. Hey, Matt. Since I had to listen to endless hours of your storytelling this week, I need for you to do me a favor. We're gonna see a little girl with brown hair. Very messy, lots of knots. Her name is Sarah. Can you please tell her that mama found her red shoe? It was just right under the bed. Give her a big hug and big kiss for me and tell her that mama misses her. She makes me so proud. So, so proud. And you tell her that I'm not quitting. You tell her that I love her, Matt. Can you do that for me? Here we go. Oof. You're losing altitude, Tangong. You keep dropping and you're gonna kiss the atmosphere. But not without me, because you're my last ride. <laughs> oh, she's gonna do uh, like a Matt Damon? Three. Get the f- <laughs> no, so, just some, driving. That's some Dom Toretto stuff. That thing's just about to go into the atmosphere. Oh. Oh. The last thing you could grab a hold of. Oh, we got a debris field coming again. This shit again! Oh, it almost blew yeah, her away again. again. Oh, it's all the manuals. I'm like, like looking over. I know. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, this thing's ripping apart. No. Uh. Oh. We really need to disengage. Undocking, undocking. Oh. Okay, that doesn't sound good. No hablo chino. Ah. Okay. Okay, good. That's still a long time. That's <laughs> a long a movie. time. <laughs> oh my god. This is mission specialist Ryan Stone. I'm about to undock from Tiangong, and I have a bad feeling about this mission. Ah, it's getting hot in here. All right, the way I see it, there's only two possible outcomes. Either I 
make it down there in one piece and I have one hell of a story to tell or I burn up in the next 10 minutes. No harm, no foul. Because either way, it'll be one hell of a ride. All right, so it's uh, starting to stabilize. Yeah. Go in the way. Right, the meant, right way. Yeah. As far as the heat. Yep. <sighs> I think we're good. Our radar is protect your wire entry. Oh, still got a fire to deal with. Oh, oh well, shit. It's yeah. going down. I suppose once it fills up with water, it's going to swim, swim out. out. Yeah. Oh, that thing's sinking fast. You gotta get out of there. Oh, please don't be tethered to any. Oh, she's sinking. Yeah, she's sinking in the suit. Got frogs though, so it's not super deep. <laughs> oh, she's back on Earth. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> now where is she? I swear on God, if you give me sharks or something, I'm <laughs> walking out. <laughs> Oh my god, imagine putting your feet on ground <laughs> after Just all the that experience of having your feet be on the ground yep. after all that. Yeah, well, that's, that's just what she's doing. Something. Yeah. Mud or clay or whatever it is. Thank you. Okay, so she could swim because yeah but not really Get, getting used to the gravity look at that shot that's cool the way they did that mm -hmm. oh i love how they shot that mm -hmm. huh. <laughs> that's it she made it back oh alfonso what did you do to us all right wow, wow. that was a gravity and a unbelievable uh what can you say about it first off let's give a lot of credit to sandra bullock basically a one woman show for essentially a little over an hour probably it was basically just her uh charming george clooney popped in for Ugh. the initial 10 15 20 minutes whatever he was in the movie for but it wasted absolutely no time and just Stupid. got right to it and I just saw the, the box office numbers that cost anywhere from 80 to 130 million to make and it made 723 million so I think they wow. did I think they did okay, <sighs> okay. but the the audio in this the sound the the musical score was just absolutely incredible the way that it was used I, I it's it's so strange i mean because of the sound and the visuals and it, it took you right like i felt like i was yeah. there like all three of us were right there with with sandra bullock in this going through what she went through that and especially with headphones on i know mm. that you know maybe a lot of folks don't watch movies with headphones but it creates such a different experience because everything is just right there it tunes everything else out so what a difference that made for this movie but just so much tension right from the start i mean immediately they wasted no time i think it was like six seven eight minutes in and we had a disaster on yeah. our hands and it's it's strange because i i really struggle to put this movie in a in a nice neat box as to what it is i mean i guess it's uh you know a a tale of survival uh of of tension but i i can't say i've ever seen anything like it where you know, I think the one movie that I've seen where it's kind of like a one-man show sort of thing was uh, Locke, 
with Tom Hardy. And that basically takes place. It's him in a car talking on a cell phone for the whole movie, basically. And that was really good. This obviously was different than that. But, you know, Sandra Bullock was a one woman show in this. She carried everything herself. An amazing acting job. But I can honestly say I haven't seen anything like this audio visual. Incredible. The the silence is deafening uh, with this. I mean, you're seeing all the ca- cata- the catastrophic, all the explosions. Sorry, couldn't get to get the word out. You're seeing everything that's happening all around her, but yet you know you're used to in every single movie you see the explosions, you know, and and the, just the sounds of it. This we only saw the visuals. We saw like the light thudding and stuff like that. Even like. What I thought was cool too is when they use the tools out in space where you just hear Yeah, real slightly. You know, just real nice and you know, it just you could barely hear it. And then to see all these big explosions and like you have no you have no sound to go with it. You're just seeing it and just like that's how it'd be for her in space. You'd you could see it like that's why it was so intense, I think, for us too, is like it's all happening behind her and you're used to in movies of it they're they're like looking at at the explosion. Here she she's not really hearing anything so she's not looking back at anything and it, so it's so eerie you know it's, it's so you don't know what's happening behind you because you don't hear it you don't give an get an idea of what's happening so i thought that was really well done the way they did that because obviously you know sound doesn't really travel well in space not, so we heard <laughs> and you know like what was the tagline for one of the movies it, it can't you can't hear it them scream yeah, that far so. scream in space so this was just amazing the way it was shot the visuals i mean this is 2013 and it looked amazing like it was done this past year at least to to, yeah. to me and just earth looked beautiful all the debris looked like like oh well, like terrifying it terrifying <laughs> like it would definitely cause the damage it did and i thought and obviously sandra did great and uh, i thought i heard it like like little spoilers of Clooney's device. And I was hoping they're wrong, hoping oh. they're wrong. And all right. Yeah, I mean, you could almost say the Earth was a was a co-star in yep. this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, uh, got an Oscar nomination. What an! In- can you scroll down a little, Lancer? I want to see what the critical response was on this, just because I'm I'm curious. It had to be okay. Rotten Tomatoes, ninety six percent. Um, what an incredible movie! I know the box office numbers. Mm-hmm. I mean, speak volumes to whether you know people enjoyed it or not. But critical response and and, and ratings is just kind of another way to measure the success and how much people love this movie. And I mean, I think this movie was just it was just wildly uh, just powerful, you know. And I mean, there's there's uh, look, the, it's obviously a very tense movie about. The, the space mission and trying to get back to Earth, but the narrative that they put out there um, with her having lost her daughter, um, you know, with George Clooney's character being comfortable just letting go, you know, like when he was talking to her about, do you have somebody back home? You know, he didn't bring up his family or his children or anything yeah. so you kind of got the vibe that it was just him yeah and just so, that his wife left him and took the gto yeah so they kind of gave you that so it was kind of like he was comfortable just letting go and it's it's a difficult like subject to talk about because it's kind of morbid but um as a parent if if you just had one child and you lost your child i have to be honest like if you didn't have a spouse it was just you and you lost your child i have to imagine that the motivation to continue living would be difficult to find on a daily basis um and like that's kind of what i kept thinking the whole Mm -hmm. time and she's like she told you know how she buries herself in work and Mm -hmm. that was kind of how she went on is she just buried herself or work and drove buried herself in work and drove and um you know there was even that part where she just was like i'm done turned everything off Mm -hmm. and that's when we kind of saw clooney's character come back um but i'm just having a hard time putting into words like how incredible 
the the story was aside from just this movie about space, right? Because mm-hmm. we've we've seen other space movies like uh, you know, The Martian. Of course, there was a lot of action and stuff like yeah, that. A lot of you comedy know, in that. They though. hit us with some emotional stuff in that movie about how the team had the choice of going back home, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Hey, you got to add two years to this mission," and they didn't think twice. Um, Interstellar was incredible. I mean, obviously similar, you know, being stuck in space type whatever and um they hit us with a lot of emotions so they did it very differently in this movie than they did in uh in interstellar and in the martian but i mean you know what a what a you know even just her catching that radio signal and you have to imagine like being out there and being stuck and Nothing. hearing somebody and, and just dogs barking and then somebody singing a baby a lullaby i mean like the, the the emotions and and everything that would go through your head. I mean, it's it's so hard to like to try to put yourself in that position and uh, and imagine like what your response mm-hmm. would be or what you would do. Would you know with that that like instinct to keep fighting and to try everything kick in, or would you do what she did and just shut stuff off and be like, you know what, this is. Yeah, and, and especially yeah. since she wasn't, you know, a, a super trained astronaut. Yeah, she only had six months of training. Yeah, and it was just simulators, so she's not, you know, knowing everything and what to do. She's having to read through books and manuals, and that definitely... It definitely seemed like she just wasn't confident in herself, and so then when she was going to give up, it seemed like she needed that final push, push to just regain her confidence and say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to get home one way or another. Yep, going to make this work. Yeah, I mean, it was just, oh, wow. It's just, but easily the fastest 91 minutes. It was, oh, my God. You know what, it was, I don't know, it's just unique. It yeah, was it was so, so different. There, yeah, the there movie was... would have been cool if they, had they gotten rid of, um, you know, because you could, you could spin this two ways, like, oh, I've got a family back home I need to get back home mm-hmm. to, right? Um and, and that would have been a powerful motivator. Or they could have had it where it's like you take the family component out of it all together. They were a couple of single astronauts. And, you know, it's just the, the, the will to survive. But um, like I said, and it's like not to be morbid, but that like, you know, with me with an only, you know, I have, I have you know, one son right now and you know, my fiance. But I picture like if it was ever just me and I lost my son, like I, I, I got to be honest, I don't. I don't know how you even go on. Yeah, that's like, tough. I, I don't. I don't know what you do. Um, so I thought the fact that they worked that into this story mm-hmm. was it was incredible, and the, the the suspense, the level of suspense. And I know I'm not sure if it'll make the cut. It probably will because I said it 90 times. <laughs> but like the level of anxiety in those first 20 minutes was off the charts, and the way they used the visuals and the the sound, you know, the spinning music, the, camera. the music, the sound, the spinning in the camera. I have to imagine in theaters, like one, how many people got like sick from like, <laughs> yeah. stuff spinning, yeah. but like the level of anxiety people must have had in theaters was, uh, it, it must have been an incredible experience. I, I got to be honest, I I don't know how I missed this one in theaters. I don't know. Yeah, if I, would be a, this would be I, definitely. I, I don't one know one. how. And I, I saw that this. it was also an IMAX, and just in, to experience this in IMAX with the visuals insane. and you the sound. I feel like this was like an exhaust move. Like, well, because what I, I liked, like it could have been about, longer than ninety minutes because oh, yeah. it would have drained. I feel like well, and I, I feel think exhausted. that's and I think that was smart of them to do because most movies would have had her like. Going through the six months of training, yeah, then they finally were going the up, up some and then finally it had it, you Drop know. Instead below. here, it just drops you right in the middle there. of. Yep. <laughs> Drop a comment below. Pull the you, pin if you saw this in the theaters, and I, I'm really curious. So help us out here. Drop a comment below if you saw this in the theaters, and how you felt when you were leaving. Like I'm guessing, uh, the overwhelming majority of everybody thought it was great, but did you leave kind of with this sense of like, I'm like I feel like I'm like. This is like really dramatic, but I feel like I'm emotionally like worn out. Right now. Yeah, because it just and I it took you on that. I remember ride. the last time I've watched a movie and just felt like I just I'm worn out. <laughs> I'm, not I'm, bet- a bad I'm betting they did the John McClane with her feet and rubbed yeah, it on the carpet to, to realize they're on like ground. I'm, I'm worn out, and what an in, what an incredible film. And uh, they, I don't know. Like, yeah, I mean, they, it was so different it was not just well you just imagine in the theater movie. though too just and it's dead silent 
yeah. while she's struggling immensely and it's dead silent yeah. in the freaking theater. Well, and that's what I think what makes it unique is that it, it is such a different movie. It was only 90 minutes long. It was basically a one woman show instead of the usual, I have to get back to my family. They need me. She didn't have anything to get back for. There was nobody. She didn't have anything, but still had the will to live. And it was just, it was done so differently. Like you said, answer, we didn't have, you know, her back on earth, learning about a program or this opportunity and then getting into it and then going through the training and then getting up there and then having all the chaos and then coming back. It was just, no, we're going to tell a very tight, compact story of essentially the human survival. And it, it's going to be 90 minutes. It's going to be all action nonstop. Let's get to it. <laughs> wow. Wow. And it's interesting that they, you know, they made the movie. I think the movie was exactly 90 minutes long. The movie was 91 minutes long as the running time. And they kept replaying that theme of we have 90, 90 minutes, minutes yep. the deep reel, the brief yeah. reel comes back. 90 minutes. So it's like this movie had like 90 minutes to get everything done. Yeah. Uh, kind of a, an interesting, I don't, look, I, I don't know if that was done on purpose or whatever, but. Uh, yeah, absolutely. What a powerful movie. Oh. So. All right, let me oh. get the scores. Well, here. what are we, what are we thinking for scores? I, I feel like I'm in, is. feel like I'm in class. Maybe cheating a little no, bit here. I no, look at I don't think else. you need to with this one, folks. Uh, again, an incredibly unique film, and for that, for me, it's a five out of five answers. This was perfectly done, incredibly unique. I've never seen anything to match it in this genre which it essentially created so absolutely stunning uh big big shout out to uh, to sandra bullock and and uh the director i believe it's alfonso uh curan i believe was the director yeah alfonso curan sorry if i'm butchering, butchering and the, writer, the name and the producer you guys know me <laughs> well him and his brother then also wrote it and the editor um oh. for me obviously i echo that because like it was suspenseful when you even heard nothing and so you're and for us channel you know we you know we talk a lot during the movies this there was so much silence yet we still were not like yeah. talking mm -hmm. at all so it's got to be a five five for the answer uh five for me like i said we've watched space movies we watch action movies we watch suspense movies i mean it's not space was uh <laughs> it's not space balls. this was such a unique piece of work that uh, you know, when you watch a movie, you know, part of what you always look for is how, how does it make you feel? What sort of emotion does it evoke? How do you feel when you're done? And the level of suspense and anxiety in this exhaustion, if you will, after watching the movie, I really, this is like, it's kind of a standalone for it me really as is. far as like emotions. Am I going to say it's the most entertaining movie I've ever watched? No. Is it the most fun I've ever had watching a movie? No. But as far as just like pulling raw emotions from you, this is... This it's it's is up, up there. there. Yeah, this it's very unique. So, very so. It was... Wow. It, it, to the people who recommended this one yeah. um thank you again i know we say that all the time but wow this was this was incredible what a what a wild ride we had so for appleton oak that's mason quinn i'm of course the answer good night pals <laughs>